When the size of the reinforced tracheal tube has been determined, it should be removed from the sterile packaging. The tube and cuff should be examined for signs of damage and ensure the lumen is free from blockage. The integrity of the cuff, inflation system and stylet should be checked prior to intubation. The stylet should be lightly lubricated with sterile water-soluble lubricant. Then apply sterile water-based gel lubricant to the distal end of the tracheal tube, ensuring the lubricant does not enter the lumen of the tube, thereby preventing ventilation of the patient. Reinforced tubes are used mostly in theatre practice. In the ICU they are not popular as they are too flexible and difficult to fix in a position so that they do not cause pressure necrosis of the patient's nostrils or of his lips. In the theatre practice, reinforced tubes are mostly used in patients who will be operated on in difficult positions or unusual positions. For example, if a patient is to be operated on his stomach, there's always a chance that the tube can become kinked. And then there's also the problem of accessibility to the tube by the anesthesiologist in that position. Other examples are neurosurgery or other head and neck surgery where the head and the neck may be placed into positions which may be conducive to kinking of the tube. And then again there's the problem of accessibility to the tube by the anesthesiologist to deal with the kink. So in those type of cases where there are abnormal positioning of the patient especially the head and the neck, it is advisable to use a reinforced tube. A stylet can be placed down the reinforced tube and the tube shaped into the particular shape needed by bending of the stylet inside the tube, making the intubation in a difficult situation a little easier.